Okay, so uh, I guess just a little bit of background info. Um, this is the fifth or sixth uh, or so of these that I've done, at least, um, in, in this webinar series. Uh, I'm Steve Means. I'm one of the instructors at CC Boot Camp. Uh, I do uh, both routing and switching and security. Uh, most of the webinars that I've done uh, up until this point have been for the uh, uh, CCIE security. Uh, so we're going to do something a little bit different this time and focus on uh, routing and switching uh, more at a uh, CCNP level. <clears throat> so here's what we're discussing. Um, IGP redistribution. Uh, this is one of the topics that uh, is kind of a key one uh, on the uh, CCNP exam, the, the route exam, uh, as well as in the real world. You, you have to know how to do this. Um, so this is for people who are studying up for their CCNP, uh, probably for the, the route exam, um, people that just want a little bit of information on redistribution, uh, experienced network engineers that might use this on the job, uh, that, that type of thing. So it's not going to be at a uh, super detailed technical level like like a CCIE level. Um, this is kind of cover the the basics and and a, a few of the uh, the more advanced topics. So <clears throat> we're going to uh, be covering uh, why you would want to even use redistribution. Why would you want to use more than one IGP? Um, EIGRP versus OSPF. Um, metrics and how they work when you redistribute, um, <clears throat> some basic redistribution, uh, route filtering, so you don't just redistribute everything. Uh, it says lab demo at the end. I I'm actually going to run this a little bit different uh, to break things up so it's not just me droning on over slides. Uh, after uh, each discussion about each topic, uh, I'm going to lab up uh, a simple lab, a simple example of, of each topic. Uh, like I said, that'll, that'll keep things uh, broken up a little bit more. And then at the end, we'll have a, a Q&A session um, and uh, uh, just a little bit of uh, salesy stuff, information about our classes. So let's, uh, let's get started with this. Why would you want to use multiple interior gateway routing protocols? So in general, if you're planning a, a network from the ground up, uh, you probably wouldn't. Uh, plan it that way, um, but in the real world that doesn't always happen. So you might be migrating from uh, one IGP to another. You might have started out with uh, an all Cisco network, uh, then bought some devices that uh, <coughs> were from a different vendor, uh, don't play with the IGRP, so you need to use OSPF. So maybe you're migrating. Um, maybe the company that you were working for bought another company. Uh, that company was using a different IGP than you. Yeah, at some point you might change everything over to your original IGP, but until that point, you got to get them talking to each other. So redistribution is uh, uh, useful in, in that situation. Uh, mixed vendor equipment I mentioned earlier. Uh, hopefully we all know EIGRP is Cisco's secret sauce. They don't hand it out to everybody else, so only Cisco is going to use EIGRP. It's a great routing protocol, but it doesn't play with other vendors' equipment. So maybe you're running Juniper or Extreme, uh, Foundry, you know, somebody else's equipment. You're using OSPF instead of EIGRP. They have to talk. Um, yeah, maybe you're you're working with a uh, a provider. It, it's very common for uh, internet providers, of course, to run BGP uh, externally. And, and I know that's not an IGP, but you might redistribute BGP into your IGP. You might redistribute some specific routes from your IGP into BGP, uh, et cetera. Okay, so regardless of what the reason is, uh, if one of these things occurs where you have multiple IGPs uh, and you want them to route, you need those two to, uh, to talk to each other. Okay, so let's let's define what we mean when we talk about uh, redistribution. It's uh, taking a route from one IGP, converting it over to a format that your other IGP is going to understand, and, and that might involve changing metrics, uh, administrative distance, etc., and then importing those routes into the destination protocol. 
So uh, we got a little example down here. <coughs> uh, we're running EIGRP. We have uh, OSPF running on some other system. We have to talk. We're going to take the, the OSPF route, um, like you can uh, see here, 192.168.2.0 slash 24. OSPF has a cost, that's its metric, of 20 and an administrative distance of 100. We're going to import that into EIGRP, same route, same subnet mask, but the metric is going to be a little bit different. It's that composite metric that uh, EIGRP uses. In this case, we convert it over to 217, 242, and the administrative distance becomes 170. Uh, so that, that's just a, a quick and easy example um, of uh, redistribution, how it, how it might work. And, and don't worry, because we're going to get into the details uh, coming up here. So a couple of different ways you can redistribute routes. Uh, you can do one-way redistribution, and that is when you're going from one routing protocol to another. Uh, and, and like it says here, it's only the target or destination interior gateway protocol that learns about the routes. So if we had you know, EIGRP on our corporate network and OSPF on a partner network, maybe we don't want to share all of our internal routes with the partner. Um, we're just going to take some of his routes and import them into EIGRP so we can reach those specific networks on their network. So uh, as far as the situation goes, uh, one-way redistribution, like it says here, it's best used when the source IGP doesn't need to know about all the specific routes. Um, maybe it already has a static route or a default route. Uh, like in the case of an ISP, uh, you know, the ISP, uh, when they use you as a, uh, as a customer, they're probably going to enter a static route on their router pointing to the external IP address, the internet IP address that they gave you. Um, <clears throat> they don't need to know about all your internal routes, and you may only want to know about some specific routes from them, so you could import the specific ones. Uh, mutual redistribution, and this is much more common, uh, is when both of the routing protocols want to know about all of the the, the routes from the other IGP. So <clears throat> in our example there, if we had EIGRP, the provider had OSPF, we're going to redistribute from OSPF into EIGRP and from EIGRP into OSPF. And again, the idea there is when both sides need to know about all of the uh, routes from the from the other routing protocol. Okay, so that's just a quick intro or definition of what uh, redistribution is. So let's talk a little bit about the uh, the specifics of uh, EIGRP versus OSPF. Um, you might notice that RIP is not mentioned here, and that's because I'm just going to ignore RIP as all network engineers should ignore it, <laughs> let it let it go away and die. I know that you might run into a situation where you're running RIP at some point. Um, I feel sorry for you if that's the case. Uh, it's not the best routing protocol in the world. Uh, it works very similar to EIGRP, so you can pretty much take the information we use uh, about EIGRP redistribution and apply it to RIP. Um, so we're only going to talk about EIGRP and OSPF. Uh, these two routing protocols are different, as you probably know. Um, we're not going to have a, a big long discussion about all of the differences. Uh, that's that's a whole other topic or a whole other webinar uh, unto itself. Um, but they do use, like it says here on the slide, different neighbor adjacency procedure. Um, they, they swap routes differently. They have a different topology database. They use a completely different metric, and that's very important for redistribution. We're going to get into that in a second. Um, <clears throat> different update mechanisms, you know, OSPF floods, EIGRP sends stuff to directly connected neighbors. Um, and, and the main point here is, is that they're completely different and they're not going to understand each other. You can't make a neighbor adjacency from EIGRP to OSPF just because, again, the routing protocols work completely differently. <clears throat> so as mentioned, the metric is the main thing uh, to consider uh, when you want to talk about uh, redistribution. So EIGRP, um, again, you probably know this, hopefully, uh, uses this composite metric. And it uses bandwidth and delay uh, by default. Um, you can optionally include load and reliability. 
and it gets plugged into this uh, fairly complex formula uh, and, and it comes out with a uh, seemingly random number, uh, uh, usually a, a large number, and that's the metric. Uh, OSPF uses a much simpler metric, um, which is just the sum uh, or added up interface bandwidth between the router you're on currently and the destination network. So it's just totaling up the, the cost of those links. So it's, it's a fairly simple uh, metric, although it is effective. Um, so yeah, these metrics are, are totally incompatible. Um, so you need a way to, uh, to make them work when you, when you take routes from one IGP uh, and, and bring them into another. So the solution to that is, uh, is seed metrics. Uh, and what a seed metric is, uh, like it says here, you don't want to try to convert uh, an EIGRP, you know, bandwidth and delay totaled up through this formula uh, and, and try to make it, you know, a cost that, that works with each individual cost. Um, in the uh, uh, OSPF network. So <clears throat> the seed metric is, is basically setting a default. You're saying if we're going to import from OSPF into EIGRP, all of those imported routes are going to get the same metric um, and the same thing for uh, EIGRP into OSPF. Uh, like it says here, OSPF has a default metric, so all you need to do is, is redistribute EIGRP into OSPF, and all of those routes are going to start out uh, with a cost of 20. That's, that's what uh, the, the default metric for OSPF is. Um, it's a little bit more complex if you're going from OSPF into EIGRP or RIP. Um, you have to set a seed metric, and, and that seed metric can either be set individually within the redistribute command, which we'll, we'll see in a little bit here, or you can use the default metric command uh, that I've uh, shown right down here at the, at the bottom of the slide. Um, that will uh, do the same thing that OSPF does. It'll set a default seed metric for anything that's redistributed into, uh, into EIGRP. All right, so let's talk about uh, basic redistribution. And, and the command, uh, like it says here, is just about the same for, uh, for each protocol, regardless of which protocol you're redistributing uh, to. The command's the same. So it, it's going to be redistribute X, and X is going to be the uh, protocol you want to redistribute from. So as an example, we might go into router OSPF20 and type redistribute from EIGRP 100. That's the syntax. Um, that's how it works in, in OSPF um, on, a, on a very, very basic level. Um, it, it's usually a little more complex than that, and, and we're going to discuss it here. Uh, EIGRP, like we mentioned, um, you need to set a seed metric, or, or it's not going to redistribute. It, it needs to be able to make the, uh, the other protocols uh, metric make sense. So here's, here's how it works. Uh, Routery IGRP 100, redistribute from OSPF 20. So up until that point, uh, it's going to look pretty much the same as, uh, as from OSPF. But you can see here that I'm tacking a metric onto these redistributed routes. So I'm saying redistribute from OSPF 20, but use the metric of a bandwidth 10,000, delay 10, load 255, uh, excuse me, reliability 255, load 1, and the MTU at the end. The MTU doesn't get factored into the metric, but you can put it in there anyway. Uh, and, and now all of those uh, imported OSPF routes are going to be plugged into the EIGRP metric formula, um, and that's their that's going to be their their metric. Uh, optionally, you can do it this way. 
you can do the default metric command and I just put in the same metric. Both of these will work. You don't have to use both of them like, like it's shown here, but you do have to use one or the other. You either have to set that seed metric within the redistribute command like that first line or with the default metric command uh, like you can see in the, uh, the second line there. Okay, so um, <clears throat> why did we go back to OSPF? <laughs> ah, I see. Um, we mentioned earlier that OSPF has that default metric of 20, so you don't need to type in a, uh, a seed metric. But, and this is important, it is only by default going to redistribute classful networks. Normally, uh, if I was teaching this in a class at this point, I'd say raise your hand if you use classful networks on your, uh, on your corporate network and, and nobody ever raises their hand. Um, <coughs> if they did, they would probably work for uh, a really big company uh, or a university or, or, or the government or something like that. Um, most people do not use classful networks on, on, their, on their networks. <coughs> so you're usually using a, uh, a subnetted network. You're usually using something like you know, 10.1.1.0 slash 24, 192.168.5.0 slash 24, etc. Those will not be redistributed unless you put this argument on the end of your redistribute command. Subnets. So get that in your brain. If you're ever redistributing anything into uh, OSPF 20 that isn't a classful network, which is 99% of the work you're going to do is, is not going to deal with, with classful networks. Stick that subnet argument on the end and then you'll be fine. It's going to redistribute all of those non-classful networks, the subnetted networks. Uh, really important to remember that one. Um, <clears throat> can be the source of, of much troubleshooting and, and tearing your hair out. So don't, uh, don't forget it. I'll try not to uh, forget it when, when we do our labs here. Okay, um, OSPF also uses two different types of external routes, and external routes are routes that OSPF has learned about through an external method, and that means redistribution. So there's these E1 and E2 routes. Um, E2 is the default, so if you don't set them to E1, you're going to get E2 routes, and, and what happens is that metric will never change. So that means that if at your gateway in between OSPF and EIGRP, you import from EIGRP into OSPF, those routes are going to get a metric of 20. That's the default uh, metric for redistributed routes. As those routes move back through your network, say they go 10 routers deep back into your network, that metric is never going to change. It's always going to be 20. Um, the, the additional links for between here and there, uh, they are not going to add on to that metric. Um, so that's the default. Uh, you, you should know that because you may very well want that metric to change uh, so that maybe one route gets preferred over the other based on how far away it is. That's, that's how a routing protocol works. So if you want to do that, <coughs> when you redistribute the routes, you can set them to external type 1 or E1. Um, and that will act, it'll, it'll still get that default metric of 20 when you redistribute it, but as it moves back from router to router, the cost is going to increment like it would for a regular old route. Um, you do that with uh, redistribute EIGRP100 or whatever your other IGP is, subnets, metric type 1. <coughs> so uh, again, type 2 is the default, you have to know that. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at that when we, uh, when we go to do this in just a second here. Uh, but if you want to change it to uh, external type 1, that's how you do it, metric type 1 at the end. Okay, uh, we're primarily talking about redistributing from uh, two different uh, IGPs. You can also redistribute uh, static routes and, and connected routes and a few other things. And that, that very often happens, that you redistribute a static, especially in, in a case like this. When you have a default route, 
uh, you might want to redistribute that default route so that all the rest of the routers uh, get it. Uh, there, there's other ways to do that, of course, like with default information originate. But if you want to do it this way, this is how you do it. You can also redistribute connected routes. That, that is, routes that are part of a router because they're uh, uh, an, an interface uh, actually in that subnet. But for some reason, you didn't put the network statement in your uh, into your IGP, you can redistribute connected and, and get those uh, get those networks into your uh, your routing domain. All right, <clears throat> so I mentioned I was going to kind of break this up by by showing you uh, the individual technologies as uh, as we talk about them. Um, here's the lab that we're going to be using throughout, and I've scattered this drawing uh, every time I'm going to do a demo. Uh, so, so I won't forget, and we'll have to skip back and stuff like that. <coughs> so, what we've got here is uh, two different networks. We have the uh, the 20 network. Thought I was going to be able to draw with my spotlight there. <laughs> we have the the 20.1.1.0 slash 24 network over on the right hand side. That's router two. That's the EIGRP routing domain. Over here, we have 10.1.1.0 slash 24. And that is a part of the OSPF20 routing domain. Uh, there's also a loopback address on each of these routers um, so that we can do some filtering later on. Router 1 here is sitting in between the two uh, routing protocols. It's running uh, both routing protocols. And that, of course, is where we're going to be doing our redistribution. So that's the, uh, that's the, the lab. Let's uh, <coughs> take a look real quick. Hopefully my uh, stuff isn't timed out here. All right. So router two is EIGRP, and it's got the the twenty network. So let's let's take a look here. Going to look at uh, the routing protocol just to make sure it's it's up and running. So I I got router EIGRP one hundred running here. Um, I've got the twenty one one. 0 slash 24 network and I've got this 22 network as well that's uh, the the loopback network uh, I am neighbored up with 20.1.1.1 which is router 1 the, the router that's sitting in the middle and then if I do a show IP route <coughs> all I know about is the 20 network and the 22 network those are those are my networks uh, so if I jump over to router 3 here and just do the uh, the same commands, you can see here that I'm running uh, OSPF 20, um, and I have the 10 network and this 11 network, which is the, uh, the loopback address. They're both in area 0. I should be neighbored up with, uh, with router 1 as well. There I am, neighbored up with router 1. And if I do a show IP route, <coughs> again, I only know about my connected routes. So that's what we want to fix with the IGRP. In this basic redistribution example, we want both IGPs to redistribute into each other, and we want to uh, be able to you know, ping and reach all networks from all routers. That's the idea. Uh, let's jump on router one here real quick, just to see where we're starting from. Section router. You can see here that uh, router 1 is running both EIGRP 100 with the 20 network and OSPF 20 with the 10 network. We already know he's neighbored up. Now router 1, of course, knows about all of these networks uh, because it's a part of both routing domains. But it hasn't passed those routes from one IGP to another, so the other routers don't know about them. Okay. So let's uh, let's do our redistribution here. Uh, first, I'm going to go into router EIGRP 100, and we are going to redistribute from OSPF 20. And here in a class, I would quiz people, but I'm just going to show you. We of course need a metric. Uh, I'm just going to set the metric within the uh, within the redistribute command. So let's set 100,000 10. Uh, it's reliable even though we're not using reliability. It's not loaded and the MTU is 1500. <clears throat> okay, so I've just redistributed 
from OSPF 20 into EIGRP 100. If I jump over to router 2, which is my uh, EIGRP router, I can do a show IP route, and now I've got these EIGRP external routes. So I know now I now know about the 10110 uh, network, and I know about this 11 network, which is the loopback network on router 3. Um, you can also see here that uh, the administrative distance is 170, and that's because these external routes are, are less trusted than uh, than regular old EIGRP or OSPF. Uh, that's to uh, prevent routing loops and to prefer locally learned routes. Uh, you can see they got an EIGRP metric as well. And so that cost metric was converted to the, uh, the EIGRP metric. Now, if I try to ping, let's say 11, 11, 11, 11, things aren't working, even though I know about the networks. And that, of course, is because the other router doesn't have a return route back to me. So these ICMP uh, echoes are going out to router 3, uh, certainly, uh, but router 3 doesn't know how to send them back uh, because we haven't, uh, we haven't redistributed the EIGRP into OSPF. So let's, let's do that. We're going to go to router OSPF 20, and we are going to redistribute EIGRP 100. Now, if you're paying any attention at all, when I harped on the subnets uh, argument earlier, uh, or even if you weren't paying attention, <laughs> the router is nice enough to tell me only classical networks are going to be redistributed. So if I jump over to router 3 and do a show IPU route, I have not learned about those networks. So again, if it wasn't clear before, with me mentioning it 16 times, it should be clear now. Um, when you run this command, if you're not using classical networks, which you're probably not, use the subnets argument. Uh, if I jump over to router 3 now, now I've learned about um, router 2's uh, routes. Here's my OSPF external type 2. Remember, they're going to keep that metric of 20. Um, I, I know about them. And, and of course, now that I've mutually redistributed I'll be able to ping over to the other side and, and the return traffic will, will get through. Okay, so that's uh, basic, basic redistribution. Now, if you have a more complex routing scenario, um, you might want to filter out some of those routes. Um, maybe you want uh, to import, or may, maybe you want to send out, you know, a few routes uh, to a partner, but you don't want him to know about your entire internal uh, IP addressing scheme. You can redistribute, but only send them a few routes. You can filter out uh, what routes get sent. So, like it says here, there's a wide variety of, of ways you can filter, but the most common ones that get used are distribute lists, uh, route maps and prefix lists. And, and that's going to be most of the rest of this presentation is, is going over filtering. Now you don't always do uh, filtering in, in a lot of cases if it's your, your own personal network. You, you don't want to do that much filtering. Um, you want everybody to, to know about everything. But there's cases where you might want to filter out stuff to prevent routing loops or suboptimal paths. Um, and definitely when you're talking to somebody else's network, um, th there is a use for filtering. So let's, let's talk about uh, these filtering methods. Uh, distribute lists. Uh, like it says here, they're often used, most often used, to limit what routes get advertised into or out of an interface. So if I had serial 000 and I wanted to only send out one particular route out of that interface, I could do that with a distribute list, applying the distribute list uh, to an interface. However, you can also uh, use a distribute list um, to filter into or out of a routing protocol. But like it says here in the last, uh, the last bullet point on this slide, the syntax is a little bit tricky. I would say wrong. <laughs> um, 
it's it's really badly uh, worded. I would have liked to have been in the meeting where they decided, oh, this is how distribute lists are going to work, because it's completely counterintuitive, and, and we'll see that in just a second. So the the way you uh, configure a distribute list uh, is you create an access list, and then the distribute list references that access list. Now the access list is going to use a permit statement for routes that you want to permit or actually send out or receive and deny statements for routes that you don't want to send out or don't want to receive. So let's, uh, let's see how this works. Here's, uh, here's an example. Um, and and I'll, I'll lab this up uh, in just a second here. So normally you're going to create an, uh, an access list, in this case it's a, a standard ACL, uh, permitting the route that I want to advertise. Uh, so I'm going to permit 10.1.1.0 slash 24. I'm going to go into my uh, router statement and then say distribute list 10, which is of course this uh, access list, is going to be applied to routes outgoing on serial 001. Now that right there makes sense. It, it, the syntax makes sense. It's perfectly simple. Uh, I'm going to say only permit the 10110 slash 24 route out of serial 001. So my neighbor on the other side of serial 001 is only going to get that route. Um, the implicit deny at the end of the access list is going to filter out every other route. So <coughs> Let's uh, let's let's see that in action. Um, <clears throat> let's jump on router one and let's say uh, router three is our OSPF one. Um, actually, let's do the EIGRP one. That'll be easier. So uh, I got the ten network. I'll, I'll do this just like the example. I'm going to do access list ten permit ten one one zero slash 24. I'm going to go into router EIGRP 100 <coughs> and I am going to say distribute list 10 out of serial 001 um, which is the uh, facing the uh, OSPF network. <coughs> so I, I do that uh, and then do my show IP route. Wrong, uh, wrong router, sorry. Okay, so uh, I only learned about the uh, the 10 network. I don't know about that 11.11.11 uh, 11, 11 network uh, that, that router 3 has anymore. Um, so that's the normal use of a distribute list. Uh, let me uh, take that out of there. We'll pull it out. All right. So uh, <clears throat> again, that makes uh, pretty much makes sense. Now, when you use a distribute list, uh, but instead of tacking an interface onto the end of it, you use uh, a routing protocol. This is where it gets weird or counterintuitive. <laughs> um, we're going to use the same ACL permitting the 10 network. We're going to go into EIGRP 100, redistribute OSPF 20, uh, which we've already done. And then the, the command is going to be distribute list 10. And again, that's referencing the ACL um, out from OSPF 20. Um, <coughs> I, I mean that that's that's it's pretty bad syntax. Like I said, um, it's going to filter anything that is coming out of OSPF 20. Now, if you just read this uh, without without me, you know, explaining that to you, uh, you would probably logically. But most people, may, maybe if we took a survey and, and nine out of every ten people would say, "Oh, distribute list 10 for routes going out to OSPF 20," because that's how it works for. Um, sending it out to a uh, uh, out of an interface but but no what it means is <clears throat> again this is uh, this is confusing but n now that I'm telling you hopefully you'll, you'll you know re remember it uh, if you ever have to do this or if, if it ever pops up on a test or something um, 
it's uh, filtering routes that are coming out of OSPF 20. And uh, I, will, I will prove that to you here. <coughs> uh, same thing, uh, let's, let's jump back over and just make sure that that uh, 11 network has been imported from OSPF. It has, there it is. I've already created my access list, of course. I'm already in my router, so I'm going to say uh, distribute list 10 out from OSPF 20. And we'll give it just a second here. Do our show IP route again. Uh, it's still uh, still showing up. There we go. The uh, the resync has happened, and now that uh, that 11 network that was here before has now gone away. So it is goofy, it is counterintuitive, but uh, remember that it is routes that are coming out of OSPF 20. I'm just going to get that uh, distribute list out of there. So for uh, our future labs. Okay, so it's back in there. We're back to normal, just doing mutual redistribution. Okay, so distribute lists are the most basic way of filtering. Um, they, they pretty much just, uh, just reference the access list, and anything that you permit is going to get advertised. Anything that you deny isn't. Uh, I did the lab already. Okay, so let's, uh, let's move on to route maps. Um, Sometimes you want to do more than <coughs> uh, just permit or deny routes. So route maps are a much more flexible and powerful way to redistribute. Um, in fact, they don't just redistribute. They, they do a, you can use route maps for a variety of other things. I was talking with somebody the other day, and they said uh, that, uh, is there anything in the world that route maps can't solve? And we had a, like a joking discussion about using route maps for politics and so on. Um, they, they are very, uh, very useful. They're kind of the Swiss Army knife of, of routing um, on, on Cisco routers. So you can match uh, all kinds of things. So you can match not only um, not only destination routes, but you can match where the route came from. You can match metrics. Um, you know, the first hop router you can match. Um, <coughs> You can match route tags if, if you have previously tagged a route. Uh, you, can, you can match that tag. You can do multiple matches. So you can say, if it's coming from this router and it has this metric, then uh, in addition to those, uh, those more flexible match commands, you can also uh, use set commands. So you can set new metrics. You can set new next hops uh, and, and so on. So they're, they're great. They're a great thing. <clears throat> the way a route map works is very similar to an ACL. Um, it has uh, sequence numbers, uh, line numbers, if you will. Um, the route map gets read from the top down, just like an ACL. On the first match, the processing stops, just like an ACL. Um, like it says here, in addition to matching, uh, set commands can, can change attributes of the routes, like the next hop and, and so on. Also, um, there's an implicit deny at the end, similar to an ACL. Uh, so we're, we're going to see this in action here. <coughs> Here's a very simple route map um, that's effectively doing the same thing as a distribute list would. Um, we're creating the exact same ACL access list 10 that we already did that permits the 10 slash 24 network. And here's the route map. Route map, I'm going to call it OSPF, permit 10. And that permit statement simply means I'm going to permit these routes. <coughs> uh, the 10 is the sequence number or line number in the route map. So we're going to match IP address 10, which is this ACL, and that's it. And then we go into router EIGRP100 and say redistribute OSPF 20 using route map OSPF. Now, this is kind of a long convoluted way of doing the same thing that a distribute list would. Uh, but, but again, this is just for purposes of uh, 
demonstration. We'll, we'll show a, a little bit more complex one in a second. So let's, let's go in and do this. Um, I've already created that ACL. Just as a, a refresher, here it is. I'm going to permit 10110. Now I'm going to create the route map. So route map OSPF permit 10. I am going to sorry match IP address 10 and that's it. So router EIGRP 100. <coughs> In fact, if I bet I do a, uh, a do show run section router, I already got my redistribute command. I can save myself the trouble of typing here. Um, So I'm going to redistribute OSPF 20 using that metric and I'm going to apply route map OSPF. Okay, so uh, if I have done that correctly, again, it's, it's done the same thing that, uh, that the distribute list would. It's filtered out anything that doesn't match the IP address, um, <coughs> which is that, that 11 network. So let's uh, let's pull that out of there. Okay, again, you probably wouldn't use a route map for that situation. You use a route map uh, in cases where you want to do something a little bit more complex. So uh, here's an example, and, it, and it's still simple, but it gives you just an idea of what you can do with a route map. Um, same thing, we have that same access list. We're going to create route map OSPF 10 permit or route map OSPF permit 10 we're going to match IP address 10 we're going to set the metric only for those routes that match IP address 10 uh, <coughs> to something different so let's uh, let's jump over and uh, and do this real quick and I'll show you the uh, the, the difference here so let me exit out. Notice that our metric here, oh, I took the command out completely. That's okay. <coughs> All right, so memorize if you will uh, this this metric 2172416 uh you don't have to memorize it it's going to stay on the screen uh so we're going to go back into our router one here and we're going to do route map ospf permit 10 we're going to match ip address 10 and we're going to set metric to something a little bit different. I'm going to go back into our router EIGRP100 and redistribute using route map OSPF. So let's uh, let's see what happens here. All right. So not only has it filtered out the 11 network, which we expected, it's also set the metric to something a lot worse. Uh, the bandwidth and delay. Uh, the bandwidth or the delay is better, but the bandwidth was much worse. <laughs> so our, our metric gets much higher uh, because I uh, changed that metric in the route map. So again, it, it's uh, you know working uh, working as expected there. Let's uh, let's pull that route map out. And again, that just that just kind of touches on 
what you can do with route maps. Uh, you can you can do much more complex stuff. You can permit some routes, deny others, uh, you know, change metrics, set new next hops if they meet certain criteria, and and, and so on. Uh, again, that's just a, a basic basic example. Okay, on to prefix lists. Uh, prefix list is like an ACL, uh, but but it's more flexible. Uh, like it says here, uh, an ACL matches just uh, bits in the address. A prefix list can match bits in the address and the subnet mask length. So the the syntax here is <coughs> IP prefix list called match. And we will permit or deny an address slash and a subnet mask length. So an example here is IP prefix list called match will permit the route 10110 slash 24. Um, notice that you can use the slash 24. I wish Cisco would go to that uh, with, with ACL so it would make uh, everybody's life a lot easier. Uh, in any case, used like this, like it shows here, um, it's only going to match. 10, 1, 1, the first uh, three octets, um, and a subnet mask length of 24 bits. So this effectively does the same thing as, as a regular ACL would. Um, and you can use prefix lists like that, and some people prefer to use them just because it's easier to type rather than using the reverse mask. Uh, but their, their real power comes from uh, using them like this. <clears throat> now this is just using them like a like a distribute list basically. Next uh, next slide here. Okay, so prefix lists uh, are, are more flexible than than shown there. Uh, like it says here, you can use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. Uh, arguments at the end of that uh, prefix list statement, that's going to change the way that uh, <coughs> that they're processed. When you use these, and, and don't worry, we'll see some examples, um, it's a two-part test. First, you're going to check the bits in the address field to see if they match, and then the length of the subnet mask is going to get checked. So I will show you what we mean here. I am going to type permit 10110 slash 24 with a subnet mask that's greater than or equal to 25. <clears throat> so to, to, I guess, not confuse you here, again, there's two checks. The first one is do the first 24 bits match 1011. We don't care about this octet over here. We're just going to say do the first 24 bits match 10111? If they do, then does the subnet mask have a length of greater than or equal to 25? <clears throat> so, like it says here, this would match 10110 slash 30, 10111128 slash 25, 101132 slash 27. Uh, once again, because the way it works is, first, does 1011 match the first 24 bits? Do, do, those, do these bits match? Okay, they do because it's 1011. Then, is the subnet mask greater than or equal to 25 bits in length? Well, 30 is greater than 25, so yes, it matches. The next one works the same. Uh, again, do the first 24 bits match 1011. 10, 1, 1. Yep, they do. I don't care about this 128. The first 24 bits match 10, 1, 1. Is my subnet mask greater than or equal to 24 bits? Sure it is. It's 25. Perfect. That's, we'll, we'll permit that. That's a match. And the same thing here. 10, 1, 1 matches the first 24 bits. Ignore this. And then slash 27 is, of course, greater than slash 24. So all of these networks match. Uh, so uh, again, that's a uh, that's a, uh, a prefix list. 
So, uh, let me erase this. Sorry. Uh, let, let me just show you real quick the uh, the, the prefix list. Uh, IP prefix list. Sorry, let me get out of here. IP prefix list. Uh, or we're we calling it OSPF or match or something. Doesn't matter. Uh, permit 10.1.1.0 slash 24 greater than or equal to 25. <clears throat> now that's the prefix list that I uh, that I typed in on the example. So again, if, if this was in a class, I would ask you, um, is that 1011 uh, network going to match? Uh, since uh, you can't easily answer that question, <laughs> I'll, I'll just uh, demo it here for you. I'm going to go into uh, router EIGRP 100, and hopefully I'll still have my redistribute. Sorry, if I remember right, it's a uh, that's a yeah. Got to recreate my uh, my route map first. So route map prefix <coughs> uh, permit ten, and we're going to match IP prefix list, or is it just match prefix list? I don't use these very often, so uh, match IP address prefix list. There we go. Uh, I just use ACLs when I when I do uh, route map matching usually. Okay, so match IP address, prefix list, and I called it uh, OSPF. <coughs> okay, so back to my router EI GRP 100. My redistribute command here. using route map prefix. <clears throat> okay, so uh, jump onto router 2. Oh, I don't know about anything all of a sudden. And, and once again, that's because uh, with the greater than or equal to tacked onto the end of that prefix list, um, there's two checks. First, uh, does uh, 10 one, one the first 24 bits match. Well, it does in this case. It matches the 1011 route. But then, is the subnet mask greater than or equal to 25? Um, it is not uh, because it's 24. It's less than 25. So that's why I'm not seeing that route. <coughs> now, if I wanted to uh, go back and match it here, um, let's do a uh, no IP prefix list, <coughs> uh, what did I call it, OSPF. Okay, so I blew away that prefix list, and now I'm going to do a uh, IP prefix list, OSPF, is it permit 10 or 10? Again, you can see how often I, uh, I use these. 10.1.1.0. Slash 24. Ten dot one dot one dot zero slash 24. And let's do less than or equal to 25. <coughs> now, if my route map has uh, uh, stayed in place there, now my 10 route shows back up uh, because, again, there's the two checks. First, does 10.1.1.0 slash 24 match? Yes, of course. These first 24 bits match 10.1.1. Then, is the subnet mask less than or equal to 25? 
And the answer is yes. It's a slash 24, so it's less than 25. It matches. <coughs> Therefore, it's going to get redistributed. So uh, I guess the question that normally pops up at that point is, well, when would you use those prefix lists? <coughs> and it would be used in cases where you uh, needed to match a lot of uh, subnetted networks. You know, say you're an ISP and you deal with a lot of slash 25s and slash 27s, and, and you wanted to match a big chunk of them for redistribution without putting in an individual entry in a big, long uh, ACL. <coughs> You would take a look at them and say, "Okay, these are all the one nine, or these are all like maybe the two hundred eight one eight seven fifty two network, and and they're all uh, subnet mask length greater than or equal to, let's say twenty five, because you have slash twenty five, slash twenty sevens, etc., slash thirties maybe. Um, you could uh, you could match everything that met those criteria without having to put in an individual entry into an ACL. You could do it all with one uh, prefix list entry. So that's, that's when you would use those. <coughs> okay, so um, that's, the, uh, that's the end of the, the presentation part of this. Um, let's uh, open this up to, to Q&A. Um, Okay, I can see more people that heard me. <coughs> Somebody uh, earlier on, sorry, I'm just looking at the questions. Uh, I had the, the box minimized. Um, uh, Lee said, uh, divided by reference bandwidth. Um, <coughs> I assume he, he was talking about uh, the, uh, the OSPF, uh, OSPF cost. Um, So anybody have uh, have questions? Go ahead and type them in in the in the question box. And uh, I, I know we uh, of course didn't cover uh, everything about redistribution because it's uh, fairly impossible in in you know an, an hour or so to to do that. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Uh, somebody said, "Can you talk about mutual redistribution and preventing route loops?" <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, one of the issues you can you can run into um, is uh, if you're doing mutual redistribution uh, at uh, let's say two different points on your network, um, <coughs> it is possible for a route to get redistributed from one IGP into another and then get redistributed back into a uh, the, the original uh, IGP um, and, and yeah. If the if the metrics are right and the administrative distance is right, then that could cause a uh, could cause a routing loop. Um, <clears throat> even if the metrics are different, it it could cause uh, uh, suboptimal paths. You know, <clears throat> it could cause uh, even even if there wasn't a routing loop, it, it could cause uh, a route for like a, a local network to go out to a remote network and then come back in. Uh, and, and that's definitely something that you want to avoid. Uh, so that's one of those scenarios where uh, route maps come in handy, and, and there's a bunch of different ways to, to tackle those problems. Um, <clears throat> and it kind of depends on the, uh, the situation. Um, you can tweak metrics so that the local paths are always going to be preferred. Um, <clears throat> you can change the administrative distance so that the redistributed routes are always going to have a worse administrative distance uh, than, uh, than the local routes. Um, you can also use route tagging. So you could, uh, as you redistribute them at the first point, you could tag them with, say, the number 88. Um, you could then, at the second redistribution point, filter out any routes that are tagged with 88. Uh, it's, it's possible to do that. Um, you could look at your local networks and, and filter out with a distribute list or a prefix list uh, any routes that, that are local so that you're not uh, importing those, those local routes. Like I said, you can, you can tackle it in, in more than one way. Um, it, it just depends on the, uh, the, the, the situation. 
Um, like I said, route tagging is, is one, one <clears throat> easy way to, to do it uh, without having to maintain a, a big list of, of all of your local networks. You know, say you have uh, 150 slash 24s, you just tag them all as you redistribute them. And, and then on the second redistribution point, all you do is match that tag. That, that way you don't have to write a huge ACL. Um, so does that, uh, that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else have uh, have anything? Yeah, if you uh, <coughs> if it, somebody might be typing, but but just to kind of continue that last topic. Um, <laughs> Somebody said, is this thing on? Can they hear me? <coughs> um, as with anything else, uh, you know, the, the Internet has all your answers. <laughs> you may have to sort through uh, a little bit of junk uh, to, uh, oh, we got a bunch of questions. Um, you might have to sort through some stuff to figure out, uh, uh, to find what you're looking for. Uh, you know, Cisco Docs are, are a great uh, way to find uh, stuff like that. Um, okay, so it says here, I got a couple of things. If OSPF E2 routes have the same metric and you have that route coming from two different sources, such as a default route, uh, which one does it prefer? Um, <clears throat> as with anything else there, uh, if you have two, uh, two routes uh, coming from the, uh, the, the same uh, you, have, you have two two of the same destination routes. Uh, administrative distance is going to be used to prefer. So on the local router, that static route would uh, uh, would be preferred. I, I assume, though, what you're what you're asking is if I redistributed from a static route and from another IGP the same route, which one would be preferred? Neither one would be preferred. They would both show up with the same metric, um, and that's one reason uh, that you might want to. Uh, Again, use route maps to uh, uh, to filter out uh, or change metrics uh, as you redistribute. Uh, because yeah, yeah, having that default metric like that uh, of twenty, it's very possible in in OSPF that uh, that you could you know get two of the same routes and and have it load balance like like OSPF does by default. And that's not necessarily the way you would want it to work. Uh, the other one says, would split horizon prevent a routing loop in this topology? <coughs> okay, so uh, our, our lab topology here. Um, <coughs> in this particular topology, um, yeah, it, it wouldn't be an issue because uh, with, with split horizon, uh, you're not going to advertise a route back out uh, the uh, the interface that it's received on, um, so yeah, you, you'll notice that we don't get uh, in this topology. You know, I'm redistributing from OSPF into EIGRP, and from EIGRP into OSPF, but you'll notice that we don't get routes coming in from OSPF 20 and and going back out. Um, Somebody else here says, can you talk about redistributing between classful and classless uh, IGPs? Um, <clears throat> so I, I guess you're, you're talking about, um, you know, say, say that you're running, uh, God forbid, uh, RIP version 1 <laughs> uh, over on one network, and you're going to uh, redistribute into... Uh, EIGRP, uh, for instance, um, <clears throat> you know, RIP, RIP version one is is only going to understand uh, classful networks. So we can uh, do a, a quick lab up of of this, and uh, we'll we'll see how it acts. Um, <clears throat> we got uh, router three here <clears throat> is our uh, our OSPF router. 
So uh, let's just do a uh, no router OSPF 20. We're going to, if I do a config T, we're going to wipe out uh, <coughs> that OSPF configuration. I'm going to do router rip version 1. I'm going to type network 10.1.1.0. Okay, so uh, let's jump over to our router in the middle here. No router OSPF 20. <coughs> router RIP version 1. Network 10.1.1.0. Okay, so uh, <coughs> uh, RIP's pretty slow, so, so give it a second here. Um, <coughs> okay, so uh, you can see that, uh, <coughs> like you would expect with uh, with RIP version one, it's converted the actual eleven 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 network to uh, to the classful version of of that, which is a, a slash eight. Um, so if I redistribute RIP into EIGRP, uh, <coughs> I, I, the, the EIGRP network is just going to know about the 11 slash 8. Uh, and then the, the next question generally would be, I got these uh, slash 24 networks learned through EIGRP, what are they going to look like on the RIP network? So let's, let's go ahead and do mutual redistribution there. Um, <coughs> Router RIP, redistribute EIGRP 100, router EIGRP 100, redistribute RIP, metric, and just for speed's sake, we're going to use that metric. <coughs> and let's, uh, let, let's take a look. <clears throat> Nothing yet. Remember, RIP is not the uh, the speediest routing protocol. All right, so <clears throat> I learned about the uh, the ten one one network, uh, and again, like like we expected, EIGRP is just going to see that eleven network as a as a slash eight. Um, <clears throat> Looks like RIP isn't learning about anything. Oh, did I not set a metric? Let's uh, let's do that. Op count one. <coughs> See what happens here. Okay, so uh, you can you can see here that uh, <clears throat> all, all it did was it, it converted those uh, converted those networks, even though they are certainly slash twenty fours, uh, or excuse me, I think they're a maybe a slash twenty four and a uh, and a slash thirty two. Uh, they're both slash twenty fours. Okay, so those slash twenty four networks uh, got converted over to again just the the classful network for for the address. So they got turned into a uh, slash eight. Um, now that would be a problem um, if you had discontiguous networks, because again, it, it only knows about that slash eight. So if you had a slash twenty four in one place and a slash twenty four, you know, say we had a slash twenty four on uh, over on router three that was part of the twenty network, and then we had another slash twenty four uh, over on the router two side of things, the EIGRP network. Yeah, you could have some problems there. Um, and and again, that's that's one reason why uh, why RIP sucks. Uh, classful networking. Uh, that that's why they they kind of went the way of the uh, the dodo uh, because of issues like that. 
Okay, so uh, another question here. Since you didn't see a metric when you redistributed the IGRP in a RIP, was there an implied metric? Uh, we already answered that. Um, I, I just forgot to uh, put in a, a seed metric. Uh, again, RIP, uh, when you're redistributing, acts just like EIGRP in that you need a, a metric because hop count does not equate to cost or um, uh, you know, EIGRP is more complex metric. So yeah, I had to I had to give it a seed, a seed metric, and that's why uh, that's why that showed up. Okay, any other uh, any other questions? silence or somebody might be typing. Um, <clears throat> what I'm going to do uh, real quick is uh, get uh, Jerry on, on the line uh, so he can tell you a little bit about uh, more information. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready, Jerry. Let me, uh, let me put the PowerPoint up on the uh, thing here and then I can uh, give you audio control. Uh, it looks like you're already already turned on. So yeah, here's the uh, get to the end here, and uh, here here we go. You can you can go ahead when uh, when ready, Jerry. He says he's still muted. Let me uh, <clears throat> I think I got you unmuted. At least it shows that uh, you're unmuted on mine. Hmm. Let me. Uh, oh, okay. I thought he was joining as an organizer. Okay, so Jerry should be uh, should be good to go now. Are you out there? <coughs> well. I've got him, got him unmuted. Can you hear me now? Hello. Well, it looks like uh, we're having some problems getting him, getting him unmuted here. Um, yeah, I'm unmuted now. I can hear you now, Jerry. Okay, great, thanks. Okay, this is Jerry uh, in the sales department for CC Bootcamp. For those of you who missed a portion um, of this webinar, please feel free to email me. It's jerry at ccbootcamp.com, and I will send you a link uh, to the broadcast. We should have it available on streaming video within about 24 to 48 hours. Uh, those of you who are pursuing your CCIE uh, in routing and switching, security, or voice, please be advised we have an August newsletter that was sent out with some specials that will include the Advanced Lab Bootcamp uh, and your Mock Lab Bootcamp 
at less than the price of the list price for the mock lab boot camp. Uh, for example, those of you who are in security, you can take, you can get all your self-study materials plus the advanced lab boot camp for only $19.95 and add the mock lab boot camp for only $500 more at $24.95. Uh, routing and switching $24.95 for the advanced lab boot camp and only $500 more for the mock lab boot camp as well. Um, we do have some upcoming boot camps coming up. If you check on to the schedules in our, on our website at ccbootcamp.com, you'll notice that some of the boot camps have a green heart and a white check mark next to them, meaning that we've already met the enrollment minimum to run them. Please feel free to email mail me as well or call the toll free number at 877 654 2243, and we'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions that you may have. Thanks so much, Steve. All right, thanks, Jerry. <clears throat> um, before I uh, uh, sign this off, uh, I just want to uh, bring up that, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, <clears throat> a complex topic, you know, covered in a short time. Um, if you do have uh, any uh, questions, uh, we, we do have uh, very active forums. Uh, you know, it, it lists securityie.com up here. Uh, because that's the the forum that I moderate for CC Bootcamp, um, I'm I'm always there and I get get messages. Um, obviously, this is a, a more routed and switching focused uh, presentation. Um, you know, if you have some uh, question, uh, feel free to to email me smeans at ccbootcamp.com. Um, I uh, I like to uh, even if it's a, an off the wall question not pertaining to to testing or maybe it's a general knowledge thing. I always love to lab things up and kick things around. So, um, if you'd like, you can uh, e email me uh, stuff there. If you have a security question, of course, securityie.com is great. Um, we also have a uh, routerie.com uh, message board that's that's very active as well. Um, not just with uh, you know moderators that are instructors for CC Bootcamp, but people that are prepping for their IE lab. Um, they are also always happy to answer questions. Um, really knowledgeable folks on there. So, you know, if you run across a situation that doesn't make sense, uh, you know, the reading that you're doing doesn't make sense, you can't find an answer on the internet, jump on one of those forums and uh, ask the question there. Um, it's a good bet that they can uh, puzzle it out or, or at least tell you, hey, you ran into something weird. Maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's a bug or something like that. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the end of the webinar. Um, I'm going to uh, uh, drop off here. I uh, hope you guys uh, got some good information out of it. Um, again, either for your testing or uh, looks like there might be another another question down here. Uh, Jerry wanted me to bring up router IE and voice IE dot com um, in case you have voice questions as well. All of those uh, all those forums are out there. Okay, so. Uh, I'm going to uh, shut the webinar down. Like I said, th thanks everybody for attending. Um, and again, uh, you, you know where to go if you have additional questions.